Thank you, everybody. Can you hear me well? Well, thank you for rising and coming to the talk this early morning. Um, <clears throat> the talk is 10 minutes long, so it's about the design and how Amsterdam became the, uh, the creative hub of Europe. And a while ago, Kira Ross, who is the IAA Dutch chapter president, asked me to give a talk about how Amsterdam became the creative hub of Europe. And she said, the, she didn't say A, she said the creative hub of Europe. And to this, my first reaction was, wow, you Dutch people, you're so full of yourselves. But of course, she was, she was right. And I'm going to tell you this with a little story. So I work in Dubai. This is my lab where we develop robots. This is a typical day in the lab. We also develop um, other humanoid robots, creepy ones. Right. And um, something interesting happened. In 2011, the university asked me to develop a creative course. And I created this, uh, developed this design thinking course. Anybody here familiar with design thinking? Raise your hand. Design thinking is not about design. It's about, and I, I know this because I work in academia, and I see this every day. You can have a group of very smart people who, as a group, they have the IQ of a toddler. So design thinking solves this problem, how to make groups work better. Yes? Um, and it's, it, at the time, 2011, it was not widely known. It just was invented in 2004 in Palo Alto by the design firm IDEO. So at the time, there were no textbooks. So I wrote my own textbook. And I developed the syllabus. And four months later, I got this email from a Mexico MBA school. And they asked me, Mr. Berengueres, would you like to come to Mexico to teach design thinking? And I was so surprised. I said, wow, uh, yes. And how do you know that I exist? And they said, well, we found your syllabus on Google. I said, wow. So I went to Google, and there it was. My syllabus was on the top 10. So after that, I went to Facebook, and I said, I posted, yeah, well, I wrote this design thinking book, friends, and so on. And and suddenly, I start getting requests from friends that work at companies. And, and so I start traveling the world teaching workshops and talks. Um, and something interesting happened. I found myself traveling to Amsterdam more and more as I got more, more involved with the creative arts and scene. And, and that's the point of the talk, how Amsterdam is, is, has this pool. And since I'm an academic, I'm going to give you some data. Here I have a map, and the good thing of this era is that you can Amazon and uh, Google and, and uh, the iBook store will give you real-time data of your book sales. So uh, I, I prepared a little chart, and there's five countries here, and I have a quiz for you. Uh, these are the sales per country divided by population. So which country of these five do you think has the highest penetration? Of book sales on design thinking and since my book is not special you can assume that it's proportional to all the other sales of design thinking books any guess the Netherlands the Netherlands exactly yes um, it's actually no it was Spain <laughs> but that's that's what I call the mum effect right so, so Spain is should not be considered but if you if you look at the sales uh, yeah Netherlands has the highest penetration and followed by the English, but the English is it's their mother tongue, right? And the lowest is France, and the average of the EU is about two, right? So this, this tells you something, something interesting. So yeah, now that we established that the Dutch love design, um, <laughs> let me tell you how Amsterdam became the, the design hub of Europe. And, it just took a couple of, of centuries, actually. So I'm going to tell you three steps. The first step you have to do <laughs> is to conquer the oceans, right? And they did this with the Dutch India company. And what was the business model? It was bringing pepper from Asia to Europe, right? At the height, the VOC, the Dutch India company, employed more people than Apple employs today. And as a percentage of global GDP, it was 10 times higher. And it also tells you something 
no business model lasts forever, right? <laughs> okay. Number two step you have to do, you have to conquer England. The Dutch are the only country to have ever conquered England, ever. Yeah. <laughs> How they did this, they assembled a fleet of 400 plus ships, which is twice the size of the Spanish Armada that failed a century before. And they did this, um, this invasion um, without killing almost nobody. And how they did this? They were one of the first countries to fight a PR war. This is the famous pamphlet that the Prince of Orange printed explaining the reasons of the invasion. It was one of the first mass PR wars. And no surprise, it came naturally to him because at the time Amsterdam was publishing more than 50% of the, all the books published at the time. He also had to do some sacrifices, so he had to marry the Maria Stuardo. Okay. Right. And step number three, <laughs> conquer the world with pot. I don't smoke, lots of creative people smoke, Steve Jobs used to smoke. Can you imagine the amount of time you can save to these creative types? So that's the three steps. Now I'm gonna tell you four notable contributions of Dutch design to the world. Uh, first contribution, they were the first to legalize gambling, high stakes gambling, the first stock exchange. Second contribution, this is the church of the red light district. When the sailors came back from these long trips, they wanted something and they got it in the red light districts and after that, the ones who needed something else, <laughs> they could find it in the same place. This was a beautiful circle. Number three, have you ever been to Amsterdam? Have you seen the leaning houses? Well, it took me some years to realize that this was not the result of dodgy Dutch architecture. This was on purpose, and I think the tourist office should explain this. Um, they were one of the first to put function before form, yeah? So it was easy to host things up and down. So that was incredible. I mean, who has the balls to do this? Uh, the Italians came out first with the idea, but they didn't make use of it. Um, number four, this is the KPN Tower in Rotterdam. In case you cannot see it, this was supposed to be like a K. KPN is the telecom operator. And they were one of the first to put form before function. Yeah, so it's, it's like a statement, like saying, well, we will screw you with our data plans or, or mobile fees, but we will never let our building fall on you. We don't want to kill that. Uh, then the Spanish tried to copy the concept, but it didn't really work. This is Madrid. <laughs> and last slide. So I teach design thinking. I teach many workshops. And this is a typical picture of a design thinking workshop after a brainstorming. What happened here, these four students from Dartmouth College, they just had the brainstorming and they put all the ideas they had, all the possible solutions, potential leads, crazy ideas, on the whiteboard. Um, the purpose of this is to share ideas as fast as possible with the hope that by combining some idea together with other idea, they can connect the dots and find a better solution, yes? This is the core of design thinking, helping people, brains to connect and share ideas. And, and the key is to let the ideas combine to find a better solution. From the ideas point of, 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 from the idea side, what you can say what's happening here is that the ideas are using people's brains to evolve on their own. And they're not only using the people's brains, they're using the whiteboard, yes? So I've done many workshops, and I know that if you have the wrong whiteboard, the wrong post-its, the wrong size of markers, the workshop fails. So today, for the creative space, Amsterdam is one of the best whiteboards you can find, and that's the point of the talk. So thank you very much. I'll see you in Amsterdam.